Does losing weight after 40 seem harder than ever before? Once I hit 40, following the strict plans that I once had success with, like keto and intermittent fasting, only led to weight gain. It took some time, but I finally cracked the weight loss code for my weight gain after 40. Stay tuned for three simple women's women over 40 should follow to finally get back on track with your health and weight loss goals. Now, before we talk rules, please like the video and subscribe so I can help you finally reach your weight loss goals for good. Hey, I'm Nissa, and my 100 pound weight loss story was featured in media like People Magazine and Pop Sugar. Since then, I've helped hundreds of women break free from fad and yo yo diets with the same simple macro approach I use to lose 100 pounds. Okay, let's talk about the three simple fat loss rules women over 40 can use to finally get the scale moving. The first rule you should follow for consistent weight loss after 40 is you have to calculate your appropriate calorie deficit, which also includes the right macros. Now, if you've never paid attention to calories or macros in the past, I promise you this is a big piece of the fat loss puzzle, and it's also really easy to figure this part out. All you have to do is find an online calculator, like my favorite macro calculator at prophysique.com, and type in your stats, like your age, your weight, your height, your activity level, basically whatever it asks for, and then the calculator will spit out a calorie range along with suggested macros. Now when you are calculating your macros, I want you to keep in mind that online calculators can only provide a guess based on your stats. So while using these calculators is really a great starting point, you may need to analyze and tweak your numbers over time in order to get the results you want. Also, please, please, please be realistic when it comes to getting results. Even though most online influencers will have you believe that you should be dropping 10 pounds or more each month, that is completely unrealistic for most women. When you aim to lose somewhere like half to 1% of your total body weight each week, which is gonna be somewhere around one to two pounds on the high end for most women, that's a plan that's more sustainable to follow, as well as a plan where you're more likely to maintain what you lose. Now, if you've already been there, done that, and gave tracking your best college try, but the online calculators don't seem to cut it for you, you could look into scheduling an RMR test, which stands for resting metabolic rate. Now, an accurate RMR test will tell you how many calories your body burns with the basic minimal amount of activity that you do most days. I have worked with several clients who weren't getting the results they wanted with the online calculators, and obviously this leads to a ton of frustration. But once they invested in an RMR, these same clients learned it was because the estimate that they got online was off by a few hundred calories. And that's definitely enough of a difference to lead to a fat loss stall for most women. So if you feel like your metabolism could be slow from too many years of yo-yo and crash diets, an RMR test is a great way to figure out where you need to be in order to reach your fat loss goals. Of course, the test isn't mandatory, so if you don't want to get an RMR, you'll just have to be patient and continue to track. But when you do continue to track the right data over time, you can analyze your results so that you can tweak your plan as necessary whenever you need to. I've been tracking my results since this past July. Now, while at first the weight loss was dreadfully slow, once I was able to see how many calories I was averaging each week, along with my steps and my daily weight, I've been able to tweak my plan and go from losing somewhere around two to three pounds each month to doubling my progress this past February. While most women's weight loss slows down as they get closer to their goal, when you have the data right in front of you, then you can see what's working and what areas you might need to improve. Of course, to have the data to analyze, you have to put in the work into tracking, but I promise it is so much easier than it looks. Once you're all set up, tracking meals takes one to two minutes per meal, if that, while tracking daily calories, steps, and weight loss in a spreadsheet will take you less than two minutes total. So for less than 10 minutes each day, you can have a fat loss plan that you base on data about yourself instead of the drama that typically comes with each new diet you start. All right, let me know in the comments if you're one of those women who start strong with your tracking game but then you seem to fizzle out midday or maybe even midweek. 
that used to be a big problem for me, but now that I'm more consistent, no matter what, I am finally getting the results that I want and they're very predictable results. Okay, the second rule for weight loss after 40 is you gotta move more. Now, the bad news is whenever you drop your calories for weight loss, your body actually compensates by dropping the amount of calories you burn. While this seems so unfair and like your body is designed to work against you, this actually happens to ensure that you don't starve to death in times of famine. The way your body might reduce the total calories you burn each day could be in the form of taking less steps throughout the day. Like maybe you wait just a little bit longer to use the bathroom because you're just too tired to get up. Or maybe you fight a little old lady for that close spot at Costco rather than taking one of the less stressful spots that's in the back. Which, by the way, this one is a double whammy to your weight loss effort since not only can the cortisol spike associated with fighting little old ladies at Costco lead to unwanted pounds, but so can getting less steps throughout the day since more movement really does start to add up. Now, beyond fighting little old ladies at Costco or holding your pee until it's almost too late, you could even move less in ways that you probably would never even consider. Like, Maybe you blink less, or maybe you move your hands less when you talk, or you could even talk less. Believe it or not, all of these movements add up to calories burned throughout the day. In fact, according to Dr. Huberman, non-exercise movements like fidgeting can burn anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand extra calories per day, and of course this is going to depend on what kind of fidgeting you're doing. So while some things may be out of your control, like how often you blink, you can still outsmart your body by adding more movement into your day. And just like I mentioned, more movement doesn't always have to be in the form of more formal exercise. I mean, sure, exercise is great and it has a ton of other health benefits, so I don't want you to skip that part. But if you don't have the time to exercise, then aim for more movement with a new habit of tracking your steps. While I prefer my smartwatch to track daily steps, if you don't have one, you can find apps on your phone that will get you into the ballpark of how many steps you take each day, as long as you take your phone wherever you go. And if you don't have a smartphone, you could always grab a $10 pedometer on Amazon or maybe at Target. But if you don't want to spend $10 on a pedometer, well, then just take more walks and write down how many minutes you walk each day. Now this is helpful because you take about a thousand steps in a brisk 10 minute walk. So if you're writing down how many minutes you're walking, can kind of calculate how many steps you're getting throughout the day. And keeping track of this daily movement can help you make sure that once you slash your calories, that you're not also slashing your daily movement. If you're unsure how much movement is best for weight loss, it's best to figure out where you're at now. And then, you know, once you figure out how many steps you're taking per day, you do want to slowly work that number up somewhere like one to 2,000 steps each week until you land somewhere around eight to 10,000 steps per day. And now if you think getting more movement is absolutely impossible because you're stuck at a desk all day long, you need to take care of yourself and you need to take more breaks. In fact, taking a few strolls around the office throughout the day, it can actually make you more productive. So getting those extra steps will help you get more work done. Now, back in the days that I was stuck at a desk, I would add more movement by walking to the furthest bathroom. Or if I got to work early, I'd take a walk around the office. Um, or, you know, I'd always take a, a walk on my lunch break. If it was too cold outside, I'd hit up the mall and be a, a mall walker. <laughs> um, and then I would eat lunch at my desk afterwards. Okay, the third rule for fat loss after 40 is you need to stay consistent with your weight loss habits while also being extremely patient. No one is going to lose everything you gain in a month. And this is especially true if you are a woman over 40. In fact, for so many women following a solid plan for even six months, that might not be long enough for you to reach your goal. I started my current plan at the end of April of 2022, and now here we are nearly a year later and I'm still working towards my goal. But check out these before and after photos. My patience and hard work is definitely paying off. And I got these results after two years of the scale going up pretty much no matter what I did once I hit 40. 
when I finally settled on intentionally following a slow and steady fat loss plan instead of rushing the process with quick fix diets like I'm guilty of in the past, now I'm finally making great progress. Since I'm taking my time and losing weight the right way this time around, I'm getting closer to where I want to be every day with no fear of regaining everything I worked so hard to lose. Now had I rushed the process with the latest fad diet of the moment, who knows where I would be. And that's why you have to have patience and quit falling for all of these quick fix plans that only lead to weight regain. If you come across a plan that you know you won't follow forever, then don't even bother because that is a recipe for weight regain as soon as you go back to eating the foods you enjoy and the foods you enjoy will always win out in the end. Now, when you're consistent with the right habits and you take time to track what you're doing in order to get the results, now you have data that you can analyze and you can tweak as you go along your weight loss journey. Once I had my calories and activity dialed in, I was able to predictably move my progress from somewhere around two pounds per month to losing five pounds of fat this past month. Since I'm getting stronger in the gym and I'm still losing weight, I know that it's not precious muscle, but it's actual body fat. And you know, while that may not sound like a lot compared to influencers who promote quick weight loss, look at what five pounds of fat looks like on your body. Can you imagine getting rid of this every single month and doing it with an easier and more sustainable method? A method where you get consistent and predictable results? So this is what happens when you are consistent with tracking the right data and when you have patience to analyze what's working as well as what needs to change. And consistency is going to win out over perfection every single day of the week. So stay consistent with the good habits, even on days you're not perfect. Now, the main data that I track and that I teach my clients to track is how many calories I eat, how many calories I approximately burn, my daily weight, and daily steps. Then I use this spreadsheet to average it all together throughout the week. And while this method, maybe it looks tedious, but once you make this a habit, it really only takes a few minutes each day. And bonus, now I no longer have to rely on the drama that the scale brings because now I have real data to see how I'm getting my results and exactly where I need to tweak if I need to. So these days, if things don't be, seem to be moving in the right directions, it's so easy to figure out if I need to maybe move a little bit more, do I need to eat a little bit less, or maybe even a combo of both. Using a data-driven approach takes the emotion out of fat loss, and instead it helps you analyze the habits that bring consistent results. Okay, if weight loss after 40 still mystifies you, use the three simple rules to help you get back on track. Following this method is the only thing that worked for me after my scale just kept going up while following other strict diet rules that did work in the past. If you want my five top weight loss tips for women over 40, go to eatingfatisthenewskinny.com slash chips. Also check the description, I'll add that link below, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching details in case you are ready to take your fat loss plan to the next level.